Welcome back to another installment of Average Labs. Now, for those of you who are new to this series, it is simply some short videos we want to put together to try to answer some of the common questions that we get about guns or for people who are new shooters or just in general, questions that we get related to firearms and firearms training. And again, we have Bruiser Industries this week, and he's going to be talking about length of pull. So I asked Joe about this because this is something that I struggled with as a shooter when I first started shooting, and I see a lot of shooters still continue to have issues with this. So um, asked Joe to demystify this a bit answer that question and give you guys some tips and things that might help you. And also, if you're interested in learning from Joe or you're interested in going to one of his courses, I will leave a link down below for Bruiser Industries and they have a full course calendar selection out. They even have some classes here in Texas this year, I know, or next year. I know we'll be going to the ranch in April of next year, Big Texas sponsoring that class. So if you're interested in that, click the link down below. Also, he's got some across the US. If you're interested in hosting Joe, shoot him a message on DM, um, but here's Joe. Good morning afternoon, evening, wherever it may be, or you may be watching this. Let's talk length of pull. With these new uh, average labs Jimmy's doing, he asked me to approach length of pull and kind of explain it more in depth, how you find it, what does it apply to, why is it important uh, for carbines, bolt action rifles, uh, both LPBOs, variable optics as a whole, um, and actually, it really does still apply to having a good length of pull really does apply to things like carbines and red dots and these things as well. Um, if you're an archery hunter, you already know what this means. Um, that's kind of where it stems from. But it means something slightly different in <clears throat> uh, rifle shooting than it does in archery. So length of pull um, in regards to shooting is really talking about the distance from the buttstock of your rifle to where you're going to pull it, AKA the trigger. So why does this matter? So the length of pull of the firearm adjusts the angle in which your arm is canted, both in prone, uh, non-standard shooting positions, when you start shooting off of tripods, uh, barricades, that kind of thing. It affects the angle in which it places your arm. It also affects the angle in which it uh, you can't your wrist to get proper grip placement. And it also affects where your finger is and how you grip the gun and how much and where your trigger finger naturally falls on the trigger shoe itself. The other thing it affects is that it moves your head for, forward and backwards on the buttstock. And so it's really the foundational measurement that you need to then address prior to building the rest of the gun. Because things like uh, eye relief and all, all are dictated on where your head falls on the buttstock of your rifle. So um, there's a couple ways to measure it. There's the actual measurement, measurement way, which you can take a, a, a ruler, a yardstick, whatever it may be. You can place it in the inside of your bicep, and then you're going to measure to the pad of your finger or where at a 90 degree bend pad of your finger. What that's gonna do is basically the exact same thing which you can do on a rifle. If somebody was having, making a custom hunting rifle for you, that's one way to measure. In all tactical rifles, AR-15s, um, things that have adjustable buttstocks. The fast way to adjust it is you're going to take the gun, you're gonna place it in the crook of your bicep like this. And what you're gonna do is, is what you're looking for is you're looking to change that so that your hand falls and it places your trigger finger, let's see if I can get that in the, at kind of a 90 degree angle, so that you've got either that first joint, if that's how you like to shoot, or the pad of your finger placed on the trigger. Okay, so continuing that, transitioning onto the gun, what does length of pull affect? So length of pull now affects, as I mount this gun, it affects my arm placement and hand placement on this. And so if I'm controlling this gun from the back, what it does is it creates that 90 degree, like I said, a nice area of support where if I, if I had this farther back, it then drives it far past 90 degrees and it affects my wrist position to get a proper grip on the gun. The other thing that it does is it affects my cheek position. So if I push this stock forward and compress that length of pull, it's going to push my, my face closer to the back of this gun. So on a semi-auto like this, it matters because that's what's going to drive my eye relief and where I place the scope on the gun. So something like this, if I, with a proper length of pull, which is this gun is set up for me, um, I get a nice, nice neutral position with my arms, and then I can get a nice neutral wrist position and tr trigger finger placement bleh, 
trigger finger placement on the gun itself. It then also drives a nice proper eye relief because of where I mounted the scope. Now with something more like this, which has, is a bolt action rifle, same thing. Proper length of pull is set up on this gun. It gives me a nice neutral arm position as I grip, but it also places my hand in a proper position to manipulate the bolt. So as if I have a proper eye relief on this gun, a pro proper eye relief, proper length of pull, I can function that bolt without impacting my face. If I had too short, it's gonna press the front of my face closer to this, the activation of the bolt, um, which for me can be tend to be a lo lot more inconvenient and force me to lift my face off the gun to then manipulate the bolt. Um, but again, this affects my support arm, or not support, I'm supporting with the bag, but the right arm, the angle in which it sits for comfort as well as wrist position, finger trigger finger placement, and, and then allows me to manipulate the bolt, length of pull. And then it also, on this, also affects eye relief, just like it does on a gas gun, there's no difference. Um, so this is something that has to be set prior to you mounting your scope. Now, the question then comes, Joe, you said in the beginning of this video, this also matters to red dots, and why? The thing that I see is, is people are setting up their carbines, right? And there's a couple of considerations to take into this. One, as you set up a carbine like this for a red dot, um, the question is, do you, are you running body armor? Some people like to know that their body armor sits this far off the, their, their body. They're going to set up their gun for body armor. But then the problem is, is then they go shoot with out body armor for range days, for training, for depart. Like if you're in a department, you're on a SWAT team, you're in the military and you wear the big plate carrier and then you go shoot, you know, fun range days with your buddies and you have the wrong length of pull. And what that does is it that then starts either compressing you really far onto the gun because you've set it up for, to have a bunch of padding on your shoulders. Um, or you set it up before and now you've put body armor on and you've pushed that gun really far out. It doesn't matter quite as much when you start running a red dot. What it's, when it's really starts mattering is when you start um, throwing magnifiers or LPVOs in the mix. And you'll see guys whose heads are really cranked forward because their length of pull is too long or they put their optic on and then set their length of pull. And so now they're modifying the length of pull to affect, or their neck position on the gun to affect something that this moves. So for me, my length of pull, it tends to be about one click from full, full back. I can shoot this with body armor or without and really not have any issues. Um, and and then what happens is, is the thing is, I, I watch a lot of people who go, and I've been told this actually within my own community, these things don't have eye relief. You can put, you can shoot them wherever you want. Most red dots, the, but they kind of do. And there's actually a designed eye relief into these, whether you think there are or not. The other thing that really can, comes into this is you might be running a red dot now, but when, now when you put a magnifier on, this comes into play as far as well as the distance between the magnifier and the optic comes into play or how much rail space you have on the gun. So there are still considerations. And the thing is people end up being really scared to move the red dot. They won't disconnect or loosen up these two screws and move the red dot because they've already set it and they've already zeroed it. Dude, honestly, next time you go to the range, if you move this one or two, uh, pick into any rail spaces forward or back, you're gonna be on paper. So make a couple extra clicks if you really have to. You're gonna find a lot of the time you're probably pretty close. As as much as in your shooting ability. So this still comes into play. So set your length of pull, um, some way that is comfortable. I'm not going to get into the stock argument thing that's going on right now on Instagram, people lighting each other on fire, not my jam, figure out what works for you. Make sure it's comfortable in the way that you're going to apply it the most. There's going to be a way that you can set this, that you can then shoot in body armor or without and still have proper eye relief. There's also the eye box on your optics has a range of, uh, has a range. It's not like one fixed position, like plus or minus a centimeter and you don't have eye relief anymore. So on an LPVO, what you can do is, is if you don't have body armor on, you can set it up where you're on at the front of your eye box. And so as you get body armor on and it pushes that gun slightly forward, you're then still within the eye box for that 
optic. I tend to do that anyways, because as you get up off of prone, which is where you want to kind of be setting your eye relief when you're setting up a scope, a uh, little tip and trick for you. As you set it up, you want to be prone. And as you stand up, as the gun rotates from you being like this to behind like this, it pulls your eyes and your eye away from the optic, which can so if you have your eye box set where you're right in the middle, but it's a really thin eye box, or if you're at the back of the eye box, you're then going to fight with parallax issues uh, as you kind of adjust your head out of the eye box as you stand up. So some other things to take into consideration. The, uh, if you put yourself at the beginning of the eye box as you stand up or as bod you add body armor, you're still going to stay within uh, and have a clear reticle and, and uh, no parallax issues of note. So it is also important for red dots. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions, hit me up. I'm on Instagram under uh, Bruiser Industries. It, uh, if you want random shit from me personally, Bruiser Joe is my personal page. There's no gun stuff on there, so uh, don't go looking. Uh, and then otherwise, hit me up. I'll be in Texas this year with in 2023 with Average Joes and Big Tex. And you guys can hit me up there. Any other questions, comments, concerns, hopes, dreams? Say those for your therapist. I'm Joe with Bruiser Industries, and I will catch you next time. There you go. Hope that answers some of the questions surrounding length of pool for some of you. Um, I know it helped me a ton. Thank you again to Joe and Bruiser Industries for hopping on the Average Labs and helping us with that. Uh, again, if you're interested in taking a class with Joe, link down in the description. Make sure that like and subscribe. Karate chop that bell to get notified every time we upload a video, and I will see you guys in the next one. And if there is something you want to see in another Average Labs or a future Average Labs, leave it in the comment section down below. Try this again. All right, Jimmy. So my phone's sitting on a box, so it's sliding like crazy. So you're gonna get to edit this. It also places your finger naturally on, as well as, <sighs> motherfucker, I'm never gonna be able to get this done. Jimmy, you can enjoy editing this.